Previously on the bill. And I'll be recommending that he suspends you permanently out. The next time anyone saw Ken, he was being pulled out the back of the van dead. Now Fairfax has the motive and the means. You need to hear this, Jack. I've already spoken to the IMRL, give another headline. She's on her way down. Gina's got a theory about who attacked the station. Colin Fairfax. PCSO, he sacked. Yeah, Tony said he was hanging around here yesterday. What do you mean by hanging around? Well, you know, looking at the damage to the station, asking questions, that sort of thing. And then later on, Tony saw him a bit the worse of wear outside a pub. But that's not that unusual, is it? No, but then he told Tony he did see Ken before the explosion. But I thought Ken rang in and said he couldn't find Fairfax. Why Ken would lie, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. A short time after, he was found in the back of the van. Well, he sounds like Fairfax knows more than he should. If we trace Ken's movements, we should find him. I'd like to look into this. But I don't want MIT to think we're going behind their backs. Well, leave MIT to me. Our officers are dead and this is our patch. If Fairfax did do it, then we need to be the ones to bring him in. Camera. We have some news on the van used in the incident. Which is? It's been confirmed that it was a halal grocery van. It was reported stolen just prior to the explosion. We've also got it on street CCTV approaching the station. So the owners are definitely not involved? We're speaking to them now. They didn't see who stole it. It was parked outside one of their stores. Now, Colin Fairfax, I have to say it doesn't sound terribly convincing. A PCSO with a grudge doesn't necessarily blow up a station. The two events just don't seem in proportion to me. I can see why you think that. But this is his application form. There's nothing remarkable about it until you see the name of his referee. Christopher Payne. Fairfax's former employer runs a garage. Shares Fairfax's views on race. Served time for assaulting an Asian couple. So why wasn't this checked before he got the job? It should have been. Somehow slipped through the net. Do you really think a disaffected PCSO was behind the attack on the station? We think it's something that needs to be followed up. Fairfax had access to a large amount of petrol at Payne's garage, and he used to work there. But you don't have any real evidence against him? So we start digging. OK. I'll have someone look into it. How about if I made a few inquiries? Without treading on anybody's toes, of course. If we come up with anything, we'll hand it over to you. All right. Just keep me informed. So, I take it you being dropped off here means you haven't told anyone we're seeing each other? They haven't been the right opportunity in the last few weeks. And I know they don't approve. Well, why not? You know, people meet each other in all kinds of circumstances. We've met. That's all I care about. I was your family liaison officer. He's not exactly professional. Look, honey, I, I know you don't want to go public just yet. But, you know, this isn't just a fling. As far as I'm concerned, it's the real thing. I just... I want to be with you. Today... Tomorrow, forever, I suppose. Forever? Yeah. Are you proposing to me? Uh, well, yeah, it did sound, sound a bit like that, didn't it? All right, say I was. What would you say? Okay. I'm late. DC Masters, can you get your coat? One you working with me today. Colin Fairfax of PCSO was sacked. We need to trace his and Ken Drummond's movements before the explosion. I think Fairfax was involved. Is that likely? Well, that remains to be seen. Isn't this an MIT investigation, though? How much room have we got here? Not enough to hang ourselves. We're going to see a crisp pain. I'll fill you in on the way. Look at them. Look what they've done. Four teenagers. We saw them from the window. They were gone by the time we came out. White teenagers. Fair enough. Can you describe them? Two of them had hooded sweatshirts, and the other two had hats pulled down over their faces. Nothing distinctive. My daughter thinks that one of them is a boy who goes to her school, Michael Barker. 
His father runs a butcher shop on the high street. Can you think of any reason why you might have been targeted? Apart from the colour of my skin. I just wondered if you knew of anyone with a particular grievance. After what happened to your station, I think there are a lot of rumours flying around. They think that the Asian community were responsible, that it's Islamic terrorists. Any excuse to point the finger? We'll see what this Michael Barker's got to say for himself. Thank you. Mr. Payne? Yeah? I'm DC Meadows. This is DC Masters from Sun Hill. What can I do for you? Make it quick. I'm a bit busy. We're investigating the attack on the police station a couple of days ago. We've got to go around the mosques and the temples. You'll soon find out who did it. Probably all bragging about it. I think so. If you didn't know, one of our officers was in the van when it exploded. No. That's all it's got to do with me, anyway. His name was DC Ken Drummond. We're trying to find out how he got in there. We were wondering whether you might have seen him that day. Why would I have seen him? He was looking for Colin Fairfax. So we thought he might have come here looking for him. The fat bloke. So you did see him? Colin told me a detective was looking for him to take him back to the Nick. And when was this? When did Colin tell me? About seven o'clock that night. I went in the grape and bottle. He was propping up the bar. Actually, the bar was propping him up. So, do you remember what he said? He was rambling on about all sorts. About getting a sack. About the detective who was looking for him. He knew about the explosion by then. He went all teary about that. Did he know? He was so chuffed at getting that job, I can't tell you. He was gutted when you lot got rid of him. Absolutely gutted. Yeah, I bet he was. You know, all he ever wanted to be was a copper, that lad. I don't get how you can sack a bloke just because he had an argument with an Asian officer. He spat in her face. Yeah, well, I heard she was a right cow. I might have been tempted myself. Well, I think that was his problem. I don't think his views were compatible with a career in the police force. Yeah, well, you can be as PC as you like. Don't help you do your job any better, does it? I take it you share Colin's views. I'm very proud to be British. Not too proud to buy foreign petrol, eh? It's private property, that is. Essence sans plomb. If you'll pardon me, French. So what do you do then? Use this cheap fuel to top up your pumps? It works the same here as it does in France. The customs and excise know you import it. Come on. It's a couple of containers. You're not going to do me for that, are you? No, I think we've got more important things to worry about at the moment. Thanks for your time, Mr. Payne. Just doing my civil duty. Hope you catch the blokes what did it. Well, it's only a matter of time now. Right. I think we'd better have a word with Mr. Fairfax, don't you? Yep. What do you want? Chat. About what? Ken Drummond. We believe you might be one of the last people who saw him alive. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Just want some details. Ask you a few simple questions. Depends what you want to know. I don't remember very much. Had a few drinks. Look like you've had a few today as well. Is it all right if I get that? Yeah, I know, Mum. I can't talk right now, right? I've got people here. I'll come round later on and sort it out. Okay. Thought you might be here to take me back to see Superintendent Akaro. Like Ken Drummond was supposed to. I'm really sorry about what happened to him. And the others. Those Asians, eh? You reckon that's who it was? Well, a lot of Asians were arrested that morning. And there was a van with Arabic script on the side. People see it on the news think it can only happen in Iraq or somewhere. Uh, beware the threat on your own doorstep. Exactly, exactly. I got fired for saying that. That's not what you got fired for, Colin. I understand you saw Ken on the day of the attack. Uh, yeah. That's what you told Tony. I went to the pub after I got sacked. DC Drummond came in. Said I had to go back to the station. I said I didn't want to. That's pretty much it. I left, he stayed there. 
They didn't follow you? Well, if you did, I didn't see him. We just let you walk away. I was pretty moody. I don't think he was up for a fight. So what time was that, then? I ain't sure. Well, have a think. I mean, you left the station at half past one. He was sent to follow you about twenty past two. And he died just before quarter to five. I suppose it must have been around three-ish. What, three o'clock? Something like that, yeah. What was the pub? Grape and bottle. Did you go anywhere after? No. You must have gone somewhere. I mean, I came back here. You didn't call it anywhere en route? I don't think so. It's all a bit hazy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course it is. We try and remember. There you go, my love. Three pounds six and change. Thank you very much. My son is not a racist. The woman had the words, go home, pack his scum, sprayed on her front doors. That seems fairly racist to me. My colleague is something of an expert on this subject. It can't have been Michael anyway, he's at school today. Well, actually, Mr Barker, we've just been there. And he left earlier, claiming he felt ill. Well, I haven't seen him. Where do you think we might find him? Well, if he was ill, maybe he went to the doctor. Or oh, maybe he came home, got changed and went out with his mates. So, you went back to bed for a couple of hours. And when you woke up, you went out for another drink. Yeah. To the grape and bottle again? Yeah. And is that where you heard what had happened at Sun Hill? Everybody was talking about it when I walked in. I couldn't believe it. You know, none of this makes any sense to me. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I'm sure you are. It's just I can't understand how Ken ended up in the back of the van. Mm. Have you any idea? Me? Yeah, well, I know you got sat, but you did train as a PCSO. Did you hear anything in the pub? Anybody talking? Those Asians? I don't think so. They might have come in after I'd gone. Well, that's a possibility. Or he could have seen him in the street loading up the van with petrol. That's also a possibility. Just out of interest, what made you think there was petrol in the back of the van? I don't know. Because that was never made public, was it, John? Uh, not to the best of my knowledge, no, Gov. I think Tony Stamp told me. All right. Thanks, Colin. That's it. Yeah, we've got a better idea what Ken's whereabouts were now. Look, I don't know if there's going to be a collection or anything for the people who died, but if there is, I'd like to you know, contribute. That's very thoughtful of you. Yeah, well, you know, I worked with them, didn't I? I better go and talk to Marco's dad again. See if he's shown his face yet. Poor bloke, he really thinks his son's one of the good guys. It won't last. Not when he hears what Michael teachers called and told us. Don't you have some sympathy for the father? Michael Barker's been terrorising that Asian girl at school. He's a bully. How can you miss that in your own son? Well, there's plenty my parents don't know about me. He wasn't any different. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. You've shown your mum your honeymoon snaps yet, have you? 275 from Sierra Bravo. Islamic Centre, Whitson Road, a disturbance reported. Informant, Halima Bashir. Sierra Bravo from 275, all received on our way. So I just spoke to Tony Stamp. He doesn't recall discussing the petrol at all with Colin Goff. No surprises there, then. Well, shall I have got enough for MIT, though? We we'll need to check the times, fill in the gaps, get some evidence. Is that where you found it? No, it was on the step. I swept it over there. Same kids? Well, I don't know. Of course it was. I can only imagine so. I was hoping you might have done something to stop them running. We've spoken to the school and Michael Barker's father. Hopefully we'll catch up with Michael before too long. Before he puts a brick through the window. Or worse. I know it's not your fault, and I know you've probably got more important things to do, but I'd really like this to stop. I appreciate that, Miss Bashir. And this is important. He's just trying to fob you off. Hannah's a friend of my sister's. She's been staying at the centre for a while. She's been having a difficult time. Anything we need to look into? Nothing like that. Personal, I think. Though she won't say much. Don't mind her. She's just fragile, vulnerable. Well, I don't think we can spare any officers to remain on duty outside the centre, but I'll see what we can do about stepping up the patrols. Thank you. Everything all right? Let's return this to its rightful owner, shall we? Would you mind checking the serial number on this? You do keep records, don't you? Well, what's happened? Remember the woman from the Islamic Centre with the graffiti? This has just been left on her doorstep. She's Muslim. And this is about the most offensive thing anyone could do. So if you wouldn't mind checking that serial number for us? 
No need, it's one of mine. Michael! Your son's here. Michael, get down here now! He came back half an hour ago. I told him about the graffiti, he said he didn't know anything about it. Michael, we've been looking for you. I didn't spray anything on anyone's door. And you didn't leave this on anyone's doorstep? It wasn't me. One of my mates must have took it. They're around here all the time. Well, how about some names? We can go and talk with them. Come on. What now? We're going to arrest him and interview him down at the station. Either you or his mother will need to be with him. Early closing, Michael. That's all I need. <laughs> Shame we didn't know about this place before. Could have brought you here when we were seeing each other. Yeah, a real shame. Oh, come on, where's your sense of humor? There she is. Hello, Morag. All right. <laughs> Been to the supermarket today? Me? No. Are you sure? Because the security guy gave us a pretty good description of the woman he chased. Not me. Can you empty your pockets, please, Morag? <clears throat> You got receipts for those? Um, I think you've seen us somewhere. How did you know where to find me? Because this is where you always come to sell your stolen goods. So come on. Excuse me? What's that? Keep it away from me. All right, uh, what's the problem? I'm pregnant. Oh, right. Four months. Well, congratulations. That's why I started nicking again. I need to get some money. That's not like X-ray or anything. No, it's just an ultraviolet light. We use it to detect something called smart water. Some businesses have smart water systems nowadays. If you break in, your clothes get sprayed and then we can trace it back to the incident. Will it be on the CDs? Well, it's usually used for more serious stuff than that. And I doubt your local supermarket's got smart water. It's just routine. We're scanning everyone that comes into custody today. All right? Okay, then. Good. Okay. Is that bad? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Moira, do you want to hand me the jacket, please? Thank you. All right, I'll put more. I'll if you take his jacket up to see ID. Cheers. It's not a good time, Scott. Yeah, of course, I've thought about what you've said. I can't do anything but think about it. Of course not. It's, it's just it did come out of the blue a little bit. Listen, I, I've really got to go, OK? Bye. I thought you stopped seeing Scott. Oh, you shouldn't listen to other people's private conversations. You can't stop him phoning me. He's been assigned an upper FLO. What's he not feeling? Nothing much. He doesn't sound like nothing. It sounded like he was putting the pressure on. So what's the problem? You're just saying no. Or you tell someone he's being a pain. He's not, Yvonne. He's a nice guy. I can't help liking him. Well, more than you like Steve? I like Steve, but this is different. Scott's different. Scott's wife's been killed. You've offered him comfort and he's latched on to you. I'm just helping him through a difficult time. All right, so you know what you're doing, but does he? I mean, the man's on an emotional roller coaster. Yes, and he's not stupid. I'm not saying that, honey. I'm just saying be careful. You barely know the bloke. I do know him. Better than you think, Yvonne. What I'm saying is he could be using you. Maybe he doesn't even know it himself. Fairfax was telling the truth. He was having a drink in here. Ken came in about three. They had a few words, and then Fairfax left. Come look at this. What, so then Ken went after him? So why did he phone Phil half an hour later and say he hadn't seen Fairfax? Well, maybe he was embarrassed. You know, he wanted to cover up. Look, it's part of a chain. There's one near my house. It's run by the family who owns the van used to blow up the nick. Now, that's the shop the van was stolen from. MIT interviewed them when they reported it stolen. And there's no CCTV in this street. And who was drinking in a pub on the next street? Fairfax. 
And now we know Ken was there too. So let's say Fairfax comes out of the pub and is boozed up and angry. He wants revenge and to blame someone who thinks deserves it. Sees a van. Bingo. Right, that's it. Gov, where are we going? We're going to bring Fairfax in. And this time, we're not giving him any choice. This is Fairfax. I'm DCI Meadows. This is DC Masters from Sun Hill. What's the matter? Has something happened to Colin? No, nothing like that. No, we just wondered if you'd seen him. We've been round to his flat, but he wasn't there. We know he was coming to see you this afternoon. He was meant to be, but he hasn't turned up yet. Oh, that's a shame. Do you want to come in and wait for him? I've got a problem with my washing machine. I thought he might be able to fix it. He's good with machines. That's right. He used to fix cars, didn't he? I think he might have been better off sticking to that rather than, well, you know. Well, police isn't for everyone. Michael, we have a witness who saw you spray graffiti on the Islamic Centre. Wasn't me. I wasn't there. We've had a chat with your headmaster. You've made quite a name for yourself. Yeah, well, I'm a popular guy. Not with the Asian girl you and your mates have been bullying lately. She's gone to see a teacher today about you, Michael. She's too scared to come to school. A racist. I didn't bring you up to be a racist. No, you brought me up to be a butcher. A part of London where nobody will buy me. This is killed in a special way. Which is why I have to work so damn hard to keep it going. I have enough trouble persuading people to come into the shop as it is. The supermarkets will take most of my customers. And the rest of them are going to disappear if I get labelled a racist. So you're having a laugh? Am I laughing? Everything I've worked for. Michael, we know you were there. We know you got the pig's head. But you didn't do this by yourself, did you? You want names and addresses of your mates. I've never seen him so happy. I thought it was a chance for him to turn things around a bit. In what way? Colin's not perfect and his temper's terrible. But he's had a lot of bad luck. He needed something he could be proud of. He told me he'd been rude to that coloured lady. But did you have to sack him? But he wasn't just rude. He insulted her and spat in her face. We had no choice. Broke his heart. He come round here afterwards and he was in tears. Well, he came here on the same day. Thrown out of the station, he said. Jacket and trousers all dirty and torn. Not right. So what time was that? Can you remember? Half five. Half past five, are you sure? Positive. One of them quiz programmes was just starting. I could never answer many of the questions, but I'll watch anyway. <laughs> and his trousers were torn? I said he should get compensation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we can't give him compensation until he's shown us his clothes. Well, that's easily done. They're still in my washing machine. I say easily done, but that's the problem. I can't turn the damn thing on and now the door's jammed. Do you mind if I have a go? Oh, I hope you can. Oh, they still stink of petrol, do they? Yeah, just a bit. Sorry, me, love. We're in here, love. What's going on? Just tell her, Mrs. Fairfax, and don't touch those clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! God! Right, you call it in. I'll get the clothes. Interesting result on that jacket you bought in earlier. The smart water on the jacket is from a jeweler in the Delo Road. The system threatened with a pistol, 15 grams worth of watches taken first week in January. Wow. I don't know, it gets better than that. The MO matches six similar jobs over the last ten months. That jacket's the first solid lead. I think the flying squad are going to want to talk to your suspect. She's an 18-year-old shoplifter. But it's a man's jacket. She said she found it. How do you just find a £500 jacket lying around? She's a nice kid. 
Just not very bright. Look, can't we keep this in-house? Contact the flying squad and we got something more solid. What's up with you? You got the hots for her, I think. No. Well, let me talk to her. I'll be nice. What's her name? Morag Jones. Morag Jones. I'll speak to you later. Tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime. You know, it's like sometimes you get involved. Can't always keep your distance. Look, Morag, you don't just find a £500 coat lying in the middle of the road. I'm in enough trouble as it is. I don't want to say anything that will make it worse. And keeping quiet about it's not going to make it any better, is it? I don't know anything about jewellery robbery. Yeah, I think I know that now. We're looking for a man in his 30s, possibly early 40s. Your dad, maybe. If you can find my dad, you're doing better than my mum ever did. And what about your boyfriend, then? His name's Ryan. And if he could afford a jacket like that, he wouldn't be working in a factory. Don't go hassling him. He's got nothing to do with it. You're protecting someone. I'm protecting myself! If I tell you where I got that jacket, then Ryan will know where I've been. And he'll dump me, and my baby won't have a father, and my kid will end up like me, all right? Ryan doesn't need to know anything about this. Yeah, but I'll have to cut a court and everything. Ah, but there's ways around that. If you cooperate. Ryan was on that shift. I said I'd stay in, but I didn't. I went to the pub and ended up at a party, yeah? A party around some girl's ass. She was like, come on everybody, all back to mine. And I just went along with it. But anyway... But anyway... These blokes turned up and started doing drugs and stuff and trying to get me to join in. And I was like, whoa, I'm pregnant. And? And so I left. But it was, like, really cold outside, yeah? So I went to a cupboard and took that jacket. I don't know who it belonged to. Probably her dad, I suppose. OK. There weren't no jewels in it or nothing. No. Probably not. Morag, do you remember where the girl lives? Well, that's the thing. I'm not really sure. I kind of know where it is. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'd know it if I saw it again. It had, like, these trees. Palm trees. So, if I put you in a car with PC Hunter and PC Harmon, you could find it again? Well, yeah. Somewhere. You said that when we were at Elcott Gardens. No, no, this time I am sure. Oh, this is it, this is it down here. All right, Maura, don't go charging up there. You don't want to be seen and neither do we. All right, all right, got it. Now take your time. Think back to the night of the party. Are you sure that's the house? Yeah, definitely. It's the trees. So the house numbers three, five, seven, nine. All right, back to the car. Get hold of DC Perkins and let them know we found it. Come on, Maura. Can I help you, sir? Mr. Kennedy. So I don't need to introduce myself. I suppose my photo has been on the front of several newspapers. I think my favourite headline was Rape Trial Collapses, Kennedy Walks Free. So, what do you want, Mr. Kennedy? I was wondering if DS Nixon was available. Is she expecting you? I wouldn't have thought so. Can I ask what it's in relation to? I think I'd rather speak to D.S. Nixon. If this is about your trial, I think it's better that you speak to somebody else. I don't think she'll see you without a good reason. Well, you tell her that I've been receiving anonymous letters and phone calls, people threatening to kill me, and that I'm scared. Yep. Yep. No, the informant was a teenage shoplifter. I'll fax the statement over to you now. You're all right. Cheers, mate. Bye. Sarge. Mm-hmm. Alan Kennedy's in the front office. I don't suppose he's come to give himself up. He claims he's received anonymous threats. He says he's scared. Do serial rapists get scared? He wants to speak to you. Yeah, I bet he does. OK. Thanks, Simon. 
I'm just in the process of applying for him to go under surveillance with the risk assessment department and now he wants to talk to me. No, he's having a laugh. I'll deal with it. Yeah? Yeah, why not? I'm having a good day. I've just cleared up a dozen jewellery robberies. No, I'm on a roll. You stay what you're doing. I'll give him your best. Mr Kennedy, I'm T. Perkins. I've heard a lot about you. I asked to speak to D.S. Nixon. Yeah, I uh, She's very busy. She asked me to pass on her best wishes, though. Now, I understand that you've been on the receiving end of some threats. Is that right? Anonymous letters, phone calls in the middle of the night. I'm sorry to hear that. Any idea who's behind it? Well, if I knew who was behind it, they wouldn't be anonymous, would they? <laughs> That's a good point. So tell me, what's the, what's the content of these phone calls and letters? They're threats. Yeah, I know, but what type of threats? Threats to kill you? To hurt you? Like you hurt your victims? No, really, I'm interested. How do these people want to hurt you? I don't believe a word he says. This kid is not being threatened. It's just some pony excuse to see you. Strangely, I'm not flattered. Sarge, now what? Kennedy's refusing to leave and talking about making a formal complaint. He says Terry didn't show him sufficient respect. Why don't I go downstairs and give him something to complain about? Terry. Tell him I'm on my way. He's playing mind games with you, Sarge. Don't get involved with the geezer. I'm already involved. See you in court, then, yeah? Right, so. It's not all bad news. Thanks to your information, the Fly Squad are about to interview a guy about a number of jewellery robberies. Does that mean I'll get a reward? I won't hold your breath on that. I've spoken to CPS and told them how healthy you've been. Who knows, maybe the magistrates might take into account when it comes to sensing. So we won't have to have my baby in prison? Just stop stealing stuff, yeah? If I have a boy, I'm going to call him Steve. It's like you got yourself a bit of an admirer there. Well, what can I say? It's my natural charm. Boy, should he have some good looks? Get over yourself. Oh, come on. Just because we're not going out with you doesn't mean we can't have a laugh, does it? Of course not. What is wrong with you today? One minute you're right with me, and the next minute you're like, whoa, back off. Yeah, I've just got a lot on my mind, that's all. Well, just sort it out, because you're starting to confuse me. Oh, I see you brought yourself a chaperone. I'm sure he won't be necessary. So, what do you want? Hello, D.S. Nixon. How are you? Oh, don't be like that. Get to the point. I've been threatened. The real point. Seriously. I've been threatened. So what are you after? Police protection? Would you offer that? I'm sure I can arrange for someone to keep an eye on you. <laughs> you must have been so angry when that undercover reporter blew your case. Manager smile when she died, did you? I don't get pleasure out of other people's suffering. Not even mine. We're more alike than you know, Samantha. We understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. You came here to tell me that, did you? And to see how you're faring. Yes, well, um, now you know. So soon. I caught you once, Kennedy. I'll catch you again. I'd say that's something we can both look forward to. But let me leave you with something to think about. You made me face my demons. Thanks to you, I'm a different person. Free of fear. Free of weakness. Free of doubt. I know exactly what I'm capable of. And it's all down to you. Show Mr. Kennedy out of the building. No sign. Got possible sighting of Handle Road. Right, so we know he's not heading back for his bed sit. Payne's garage? It's about three streets away. Scott. Hi. I did try and call, but I just got your answer phone. I don't understand. What are you doing here? He was asked to come in. Yeah, forensics have finished with Karen's handbag, so they said I could come and collect it. Oh, right. Do you want me to come and find you when I'm done? Yeah? Yeah, sure. This way.
Hello again, Mr. Penn. Don't come charging in here right now. It's not a good idea. It's Fairfax here. Yes. Right, we need to see him. Yeah, I know, but it's not a good time. When shall we come back then? Sometime next week. I'm being serious. He's right on the edge. He's on the edge of a life sentence for murder. Yeah, well, that's the problem. That's why he don't want to come out. He's going to have to come out. Is he in the office? No. Just back up! Just back up, all right? Back up or we'll all go up! How much has he had to drink? Enough. Look, we don't need this, Colin. What a bet. Just come out, mate. Everything will be all right. We just want to talk, that's all. You wouldn't understand anything I told you anyway. I understand you just wanted to make a point. Yeah, right. Things didn't work out how you planned. You do something. This place goes up and finished. What's that? Chris doesn't want to see you get hurt, Colin. That's all. Well, don't whisper. I don't want anyone whispering. Okay. We won't whisper as long as you don't shout, all right? Good man. I did try and phone to tell you I was coming in for this. Yeah, I know, but I thought you were calling to try and talk about what I wouldn't talk about earlier. Not sure how I feel about having this back, you know. Her phone, purse, one glove. Funny what women keep in their handbags, isn't it? Scott. Look, I am. Um, I meant what I said earlier. I just want to be with you. You already are. No, oh, I'm talking about the future. Our future. Look, honey, I don't want to lose you, okay? But if this isn't what you want or you're not ready, then you should just say. I don't know what I want. Oh, come on, honey. You know the best thing that ever happened to me. Come on, I better show you out. You'd have been better off going back to the station with Ken while you had the chance. Ken should have left me alone when he had the chance. So what happened? Did he see you loading petrol into the back of the van? He must have followed me back here. And he tried to stop you? I thought he'd back off again like he did at the pub, but he wouldn't. So you handcuffed him in the back of the van? He wasn't supposed to die! No one was supposed to die! I didn't want to kill anyone! I mean, I threw him the keys before I crashed the van. Why didn't he get out there? Colin, yeah, that's something we'll probably never know. <laughs> All I can think about is him burning in there. Yeah. Okay. It's not okay, is it? I killed three people. Three people I worked with. Yeah, well, now's the time to stop. This is just going to make things worse. Colin, you proved what you set out to prove. That Sunhill was vulnerable to a terrorist attack. All I proved is that I'm a complete nothing. Yeah, but you're not a terrorist. Terrorists don't feel guilty. They don't offer to give money for a collection for the victims. Terrorists usually kill themselves. And is that how you want to be remembered? As a fanatic who killed three people and then killed himself? Is that how you'd want your mum to remember you? I've no other option. I mean, what's left for me now, a trial? Yeah, but that could be a chance for you to explain yourself. 
I mean, you could convince the jury that you did the wrong thing, but for the right reasons. Still go to prison. Yeah, but your voice should be heard. He's right, Col. Choice is yours, Colin. You can die a forgotten martyr, or you can live, be a spokesman for the cause. Come on, give me the lighter. Good man. Arresting you on suspicion of murder. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later learn in court. Anything you do say it may be given in evidence. Right, cuff him, Joe. I'll see you later on, yeah? Yeah, okay. You know what? Whatever's good for you, okay? You should have told me you were still seeing him. Has it been gone ever since you dumped me? I should have told you, Steve. I wanted to. We weren't right together. I thought we were. What makes Scott any better? I like you, Steve. I always have. But Scott... I don't know. I don't know. Do you think it was another racist attack? She didn't see who they were. They came up behind her. All they seemed to be interested in was her bag. Was she carrying anything of value in it? I don't know. She wouldn't say. This fell out, though, so they didn't get this. I used it to call the ambulance. Does she know if it was kids like before? No, she thinks they were adults, not kids. Is she going to be all right? She's been stabbed a couple of times. Lost a fair bit of blood. Or will she be OK? Dead. Doing everything they can for her. But we better get going if you want to be with her. I thought we'd put an end to this when we brought Barker in. Hatred takes on a life of its own. Chances are it'll get worse before it gets better. Good work, guys. It won't bring anyone back, though, will it? We'll be moving into another station. It doesn't seem appropriate to question him here. I thought you were simply making background inquiries. Well, he practically gave himself up. Looks like we put MIT's nose right out of joint. Well, I'm sure I'll get a lecture at some point. We'll worry about that when the time comes. I'll tell you, I'm glad they've nailed the guy that did this. I mean, what's done is done. At least he's going to pay for it now. Yeah. Someone ought to phone Reg and let him know. Might be some comfort, I suppose. I bet he regrets waiting for the right time to propose to Marilyn. Yeah, I bet. It's got to show, doesn't it? Once you've found the right person, there's no point in hanging about. you just got to go for it, mate. You reckon? Oh, yeah. Life's too short, in my opinion. We'll see you later. Nice one, Guff. Nearly got two scumbags in one day. What do you mean? Fairfax and Kennedy. Kennedy? Yeah, he came in because he was receiving threats. Well, Sam had more to do with him than I did. Sam, what's all this about Kennedy? He's been getting hoax phone calls and he's scared for his own safety. If you can believe that. Well, he shouldn't have arranged to meet him. He'll do anything he can to mess up your life. Well, to be honest, Gov, it's not me I'm worried about. It's his next victims. Right, we'll get the risk assessment done and then we'll talk about surveillance. But he's not stupid. He'll know we're onto him. Oh, yeah, he'll get a buzz out of knowing we're watching him. It's not just about rape anymore. It's about rubbing our faces in it. He was facing life and he walked away. He'll think he's invincible. I know. That's why he's more dangerous now than he's ever been. You all right? You know then. About Honey and Scott? I didn't, but I do now, as of today. He seems like a good bloke. I thought so too. But I gave him his wife's bag back today and he was, I don't know, weird. Weird how? I don't know, just not appropriately upset. There was something odd about him. 
Well, people deal with traumas in different ways, don't they? I guess so. That's one explanation. And what does that mean? Yvonne? Oh, I don't know. Forget I said anything. Home. Didn't think you'd still be here. Yeah, well. So I'll jump in. Don't you accept lifts from strange men. I'm sorry about earlier. It's no problem. No, I'm really sorry. And so am I. You're right, you know. We should keep this relationship under wraps. We're moving too fast. Well, I'm moving too fast. Sometimes you've got to. Life's too short to hang about. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, I accept your proposal. Well, don't just stand there. <laughs> Next time on the bill. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be one of those days. Phil, is he having an affair? <laughs>